mentioned is bogus, but you don't want me to say that because that means we got to do something different than what we're doing, and you're very comfortable. Yeah, the teacher, Julie Chancellor, she's very comfortable. She's got a nice job, you know, upper class, white woman. I'm sure she's had a real hard struggle. Um, but even the Ku Klux Klan would defend white women, so really I don't know how much uh, of a struggle white women really have to. When I told her that I got robbed last week and that I couldn't come in, she didn't even blink an eye. You know, to have such a lack of empathy, like, she don't even give a shit, like, you, if you was fucking robbed, your fucking door's broken, and then all your fucking valuables and shit's taken out, you, you're not going to be a little bit shooken up, you're not going to be a little bit traumatized, she didn't even blink an eye, she didn't even give a fuck. And that's, that's a psychopathic oppressor, psychopathic oppressors don't care, they don't have any empathy for you, they want you to be their bitch, so shut the fuck up and sit down, I'm the fucking boss and I got no fucking heart, no feelings, no empathy for you. Shut the fuck up. Don't make me look bad. And I'm going to micromanage every single one of you all in here. So that's, that's, you know, that's what we're up against. The 1855 Know Nothing Rights. And you tell me, you tell me why Julie Chancellor of Valley High School, the social studies Nazi dictator and chancellor, right? Big surprise. A chancellor's a fucking Nazi fascist, a Hitler wannabe, piece of shit, low-life motherfucker. Yeah, big fucking surprise there. Um, but tell me why. That she didn't want to know the 18... Why was that the most important thing in the world? You know, we're talking about the new immigrants. The, the immigrants that came in during the 1900, during the Gilded Age. 1855, no nothing rights, was before the Civil War. But that's right at the start of the Gilded Age. So, you know, the first question that we had up there was from 1850 to 1870. What were the immigrants who came to America? And that would be the Germans and the Irish. And 1855, no nothing rights, was when the white nativists murdered the Germans and the Irish. So here in Butchertown, then some on the west end, the Irish was on the west end, the Germans was over there in Butchertown. They burned 100 towns, or 100 people. They killed 100 people and burned several of the houses down. So it was just a fucking race riot right before Election Day to intimidate voters to not go out and vote. They murdered 100 fucking Germans. Why the fuck would these white Anglo-Saxon Protestants murder all these fucking Germans? If anything, that shows how racist white people are. They didn't just start hating black people. That isn't where it began. It was white Anglo-Saxon Protestants that started the hatred. So white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the English colonists, the, those who deflected from uh, the Catholic Church but still were Protestants. So they still had their own beliefs, right? So they still, they're Baptists and they're Christians. But they didn't like the Catholics. They didn't like the Catholic Germans who were drinking beers. They didn't like all the new immigrants sort of like Mexicans. They were speaking a different language. They were a competition for jobs. And they're all pissed off about it. But these are the nativists. And these same nativists are the same ones that go to the Civil War. They're the, the Confederates in the Civil War. Then they're the ones that um, are, are the, in power in Kentucky for the next 50 years. So to sit there and, you know, to, to ignore the 1855 Know Nothing Riots, you're going to miss a question on the AP um, U.S. History exam, which is the whole point of teaching social studies, is teaching... Uh, the whole point of teaching AP U.S. History is to teach them facts that are going to be in the AP U.S. History exam. And so, like, I don't even know why that should even be said. Uh, Julie Chancellor, she seems to think that if she says a fact, right, and she, she also talked about all these robber barons. She talked about how great J.P. Morgan was and how great Rockefeller was and how great William Randolph Hearst was. She didn't talk about how William Randolph Hearst started American imperialism with the Spanish-American War. She didn't talk about that. She didn't talk about how they said if you furnish the pictures he'll start the war. The Maine gets fucking sunk by Americans and then we blame it on the fucking Spanish and then we, you know, it's, it's another, again, it's a lie that initiates and pushes us into a war, which we shouldn't have been, but it also starts America being an empire. Since 1898, America has been an empire, an empire that has colonies and has territory outside of their national, um, their national territory, their main. So that's, we're an empire. We've been an empire since 1898. That's William Randolph Hearst. Yeah, but she forget to mention that. She just wants to point out, like, well, are they captains of industry or were they fucking robber barons? Back in the day, they are all fucking robber barons. The, the working class and the union movement didn't really get um, going until about you know, the 1910s. And, and even then, even now today, there's like hardly no union movement. So, um, to, especially like the, anti, the, the, the Sherman Antitrust um, Act, that was supposed to be against the fucking robber barons, but now they use it against the working class people. Same shit. It's the same shit. But regardless, regardless, I can... She wanted me to talk about immigration. I was going to talk about immigration, but she acts like as if she says a fact, right? 
William Randolph Hearst is a good man. If she or was a populist, right? So William Randolph Hearst was a populist. She thinks that if she's the first person to say it, then she just educated everybody. But she hasn't looked at the learning pyramid because the learning pyramid is only 5% retention rate for lectures. So if she says William Randolph Hearst is a populist, that means 1 out of 20 students actually learn something. So to sit there and restrict a, a person from making a connection, you know, that's another thing with history. It's 1855 wasn't the Gilded Age because it was before the Civil War, but it showed nativist violence towards the incoming immigrants. Which is what, you know, that's, 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 that was another question that was on the, the warm-up sheet. Um, what was the nativist reaction to the immigrants? And the, the, the reaction was visceral. You know, there were some people that was accepting, but there was a lot of fucking racist, fucking confederate, fucking piece of shit, low-life motherfuckers. And, um, and it's unfortunate, because it's unfortunate that you, you can't talk about a real historical thing that had actually happened, right? You can't... Um, you can't say uh, a historical event that actually happened, and um, well, I guess I was doing it. so you couldn't say the historical event that actually happened, right? And not only that, but like by taking that, that was uh, that was sort of my, you know, George Carlin has this um, this this line that he would say is like, have you ever noticed that the people who are against abortion isn't anybody you'd want to fuck anyways? It's a good one-liner. It's a good introduction to have a good thesis statement. You want to bring people in. So I wanted to get their attention. I wanted them to see what it is I was talking about. And so I didn't want to talk about, I didn't want to make a big deal about the 1855 Know Nothing Rights. I just thought that was a good bridge into what we were talking about. And also it, it became an issue when she was like so adamant that I could not fucking say. She says, this is my class. Don't you talk about the 1855 No, This is my class. I can't talk about the 1855 Know Nothing Rights because it's your class. So if I mention it, does that mean I'm going to get kicked out? Yes, you're goddamn right. That's exactly what the fuck it means. And then once she did that, then I had nothing else, nothing interesting to talk about because that spear pointed my own history, my own development. So um, the 1855 riots happened, and it was against the Germans and the Irish. But my people didn't get here until 1869. And 1869 is exactly in the Gilded, area, in the Gilded Age, right in the period that we were talking about. And my ancestors are Germans, Bohemians, Prussians, Bavarians, Austrians, African. Most white people don't know who the fuck they are. When I asked the class where they all came from, the white people, the white kids didn't know. There was one white girl that said she was German. Um, and the black kids, you know, they should have known, right? That was Africa. I think that's clear. But the white kids, the white kids don't fucking know because to be white means to have no fucking uh, roots. To have, don't know who, don't think about who the fuck you are. Now that's bullshit. A good educator teaches your roots and your wings. It teaches you where you came from and where you're going to go. And those who want to ignore those roots are either making sure you have no foundation from which, because my development, my personal narrative is like so much more expanded now that I know that 11% of me is black. So where the fuck did that come from? I got all these racist fucking cousins, and here we're fucking black. So how can you be fucking racist when you're hating yourself? You know, grip shovers, you want to be fucking racist? Fuck you, you're hating your own damn self. Um, but not only that, but like the, the, all, all the other, you know, like I'm Prussian. What does that actually mean? Well, that used to be Germany before Germany. Then Kentucky wasn't established until, you know, was established like 100 years before Germany was established. So Kentucky is actually an older civilization than Germany is. These are, these are important things. Um, knowing who you are, you know, knowing what ethnicities that you are when you came here is very, like, the Germans brought so much culture into America. The entire education system is Prussian. So the Prussian education system, founded 1806, that's what you see here in America. You want to talk about Nazi Germany, fascism, that's Prussia. Prussia becomes Germany. Prussia, the Prussians, was Otto Van Bismarck, and they was the militarists. They were the ones that was conscripting people into the military, forcing them to do fighting that they didn't want to do. That was Prussia. They were militaristic. They were strong. They kept on declaring war against everybody. Eventually, Prussia consolidates all uh, of the 39 speaking uh, German speaking uh, states into one unified Germany and he's he's noted for being a champion for doing that so actually Otto van Bismarck would have been the second Reich the, the second Hitler after the Holy Roman Empire if you want to consider that sort of a Reich 
Um, so Otto van Bismarck, a fucking Hitler, comes by, consolidates all of Germany by, you know, uh, basically allowing Prussia to dominate. So I'm part Bavarian. Eventually, Prussia dominates over Bavaria. And then there's also Austria, which is still today, you know, retain their own country. And then Czech Republic. The Czech Republic was the Sudetenlands that Hitler had invaded.